the contest. I'm going to turn the phone one for over to our guest of the day, Eric Recovery Valley. evaluation contest, there will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their balance. Now here, from our humorous speech, Number one, Young Ping Gong. Who am I? Who am I, Young Ping Gong? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Young Ping. Oh no, I'm Mike. <laughs> Sorry, not correct either. I'm Michael. I'm young. I'm gone. Oh, sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> and you forgot my name. Who am I? <laughs> oh, got it. My name is Gong Yong Pin. Yes, that's my Chinese name. Gong is my family name. Not like a, a English name, a Chinese name has the family name in front. So when I came to the United States and studied at Los Vesco University, my advisor called me gone for four years. <laughs> <laughs> I was one 
wonder why it can be gone. <laughs> because they call all other students with their first name. Why call me with my last name? Especially when you translate into English and lost the entire meaning, it sounds weird. Love sounds like an instrument. <laughs> gone, gone, gone. <laughs> Instrument. I'm Yong King. That's my first name. It has two Chinese characters. Yong means forever. P means peace. Together is peace forever. Is that a beautiful name? Yeah. Yes. I believe you all love peace forever, right? That's me. <laughs> All my Chinese friends know what I mean, my name means, so they call me Yong Ping. Some younger Chinese may call me Lao Gong, which means older Gong. But ladies won't call me Lao Gong, except my wife. Why? Because it sounds like my dear husband. Actually, it sounds exactly the same, though they have different Chinese characters. I don't like to be an instrument. I don't like my wife get mad at me when some pretty lady call me Lao Gong either. <laughs> <laughs> so I translate my name in English way. Put the first name in front. So it is Yong Ping Gong. It looks like I have first name Yong, a middle name Ping, and last name Gong. That's the name on my driver license. When people saw that, they called me Yong, Yong. When I heard that, I just thought, those guys may not get good sleep last night. <laughs> I did not realize they are calling me. We Chinese do not have middle name. The two words together is my first name. So, to prevent people young me anymore, I revise my name translation to Yongping Gong. I eliminate the little space between the two words of my first name. Unfortunately, this little change has brought us a lot of troubles. <laughs> <laughs> One day, when we applied for a home mortgage, a banker called me. Hello, may I speak to Yongping? Speak please, this him. Is Yong there too? <coughs> Yong? I think I'm Yong. Are you Yong or Yong Ping? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Yong Ping and Yong. <laughs> the same person. <laughs> to avoid this kind of confusion, I decided to give myself a English name. Which name should I choose? Since the purpose to have an English name is letting people easier to remember, the best way to do that is Google. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was ranked number one popular name for men. So when I graduated from Northwestern University, I became Michael Gong. <laughs> Later, I joined ITW. ITW is a big company. But our division is small. In our small office, there are four mics. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one nice mic asked me, Hey buddy, do you prefer me call you Michael or Mike? <laughs> uh, uh, what? <laughs> Michael or Mike? Why call me Mike? <laughs> you want to move Mike in this small office? <laughs> to confuse people? No, 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 no. I'm Michael, not Mike. Oh, do you know Michael Jordan? You do? Great. How about uh, Michael Jackson? Yes? Okay. My name is exactly the same as those great people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Michael, not Mike. Got it? <laughs>
However, many people still call me Mike. I don't understand why they want to change my name. <laughs> Maybe Mike is the most popular name in our office. Okay, okay, just call me whatever you prefer. I don't care. So, sometimes people call me Michael, and sometimes people call me Mike. Sometimes I'm young, and sometimes I'm young pin. Many people are confused, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> but today, we must make it very clear. When you vote the best speaker, please, vote your pin. Not Michael, not Mike. <laughs> not young, not gone. Of course, you will not vote any other speakers either. <laughs> Why? Because you all love peace forever, right? <laughs> Thank you. May we now have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. <laughs> Everything was going great. 
That is until the lead horse stepped into a hornet's nest. And they began to swarm attacking riders and horses alike. My horse immediately broke off the trail into the woods in a dead run. I immediately turned into Homer Simpson. Eyes popping off the head, veins bumping off the head. You know something? Horses are intelligent. They know they only have to miss trees and low-hanging branches by about two inches. <laughs> Unfortunately, most riders are taller than two inches. So while my horse is skillful in negotiating the trees and low-hanging branches, I'm being beaten nearly to death by them, and a couple of times nearly decapitated, all while I'm trying to fight off a swarm of angry hornets. Well, we all wanted the swarm, and the saga ends. Bring us to rule number two. It is not cool that you can ride your horse through a swarm of hornets. When my wife and I were married, we decided on our vacation in Jamaica. And while there, go horseback riding. <laughs> now, some of you may have seen the commercials about the nice stallions along the beach on the white sand and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the way it is. <laughs> my wife and I were told to go out to the beach, and our guide would meet us there. Our guide showed up with what can best be described as a string of half-starved pack mules. <laughs> In fact, if there had been a local chapter of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, he would have found himself at a glue factory, or his pet food, or his Burger King. <laughs> now, some of you may not remember this. This happened a while ago. Do you remember the no pest strip? You know, if you hang it up and flies and things were light on it, the stick you could throw it away. Well, that's the way my horse looked. He was covered with flies. And he didn't even have the strength to shake them off. But that was okay. Why? I was cool. I rode the second horse in the stream. We mounted up and began our ride. Everything was going okay as we rode through the jungle. And then, suddenly, without going the lead horse bolted off the trail in a dead run, throwing his rider on the ground. My horse sat out immediately behind him. And then I heard something. Zoom. 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 And it dawned on me, these horses are headed towards an open highway. <laughs> sure enough, as the lead horse turns down the path, I see about a 10-foot stretch of highway ahead. You can't see to the right or to the left because of the jungle. Lead horse runs across the highway up the mountain. I hear cars screaming, tires squealing, burning rubber. My horse is 30 yards from the highway in a full gallop. I grab those wings and I try to pull the bit through the back of his skull. <laughs> he doesn't even break stride. <laughs> My four-legged no pest strip has suddenly been transformed into a triple crown winner. <laughs> and now I know why. These horses were in heat. <laughs> I realized then that both the horse and I were going to ride a roadkill on some Jamaican highway. But what really bothered me, they wouldn't be able to separate me from the horse. They'd scrape up the horse and send it back here for a nice memorial service, and I'd wind up at the glue factory. I've got food. At somebody's Whopper meal. Ten yards from the highway, still on the full gallop, I just closed my eyes and braced for the impact. My horse runs into the middle of the highway, Stops dead. <laughs> Cars are going all over the place. Well, the times I'm beating him, I'm kicking him. He won't move. I jump off. Except now, I don't know which way to run. Remember in Jamaica, they drive on the left-hand side of the road. The cars are passing all over the place. I eventually dive to the side of the road, and I make it back to the hotel where I discover rule number three. It is not cool to ride a horse in heat. <laughs> now, not all my horseback riding experiences have been so adventurous. I'd like to leave you with one that was rather pleasant. On our 10th wedding anniversary, my wife and I again went to Jamaica and again went horseback riding. This time along a mountain trail. I rode the last horse in the line and I made sure the guy was beside me the entire time. Now some people laughed at me because the guy was beside me, but believe me, I didn't care. I was cool. <laughs> and while that was the most pleasant ride, I did find the fourth and final rule. It is not cool to ride a steep, mountain trail in 95 degree heat, high humidity for three and a half hours downwind from 15 horses. <laughs> <laughs>
sport a rebuttal. The ultimate sport a rebuttal, Bob Roman. Fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. 21 years ago, my wife was in the Humor Speech Contest here in District 30. Her speech title was The Ultimate Sport, and the sport she talked about was fishing. Fishing for a husband. <laughs> she won at the club level, the area level, the division level and was a finalist in the District 30 Fall Conference Humor Speech Contest. 20 years I have waited to give a rebuttal to that speech. <laughs> so gentlemen, pay close attention to what I'm going to say, and this could save your life. <laughs> My wife started out that speech by saying, you have to select the proper bait. And the best bait, she said, was food. <laughs> Cherry's Jubilee, Steak Diane, Bananas Foster. My wife made all of those things for me before we were married. <laughs> <laughs> After we were married, she made reservations. <laughs>
message to all the single women in the audience. Gather up your lines and cast them out. And Mr. District Governor, look out. The district governor at the time was Mike Burnham, and he was single. But soon after that, he bit the dust. <laughs> so this is how I would like to end this talk. Ladies, cast those lines with caution, for we gentlemen are a lot smarter now. And isn't it ironic that our current district governor and our immediate past district governor are young, good-looking, single males? <laughs> Maybe one of them. <laughs> well, this is a message I have for the, for the unmarried males in the audience, especially Srinivas and Kyle. <laughs> Nibble all you want on those delectable baits. But don't take a big bite, or you'll get hooked. <laughs> yes. We now have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. <laughs> Surya Ramachandra. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Hey, look, there are pennies on the floor. Aha. Uh -huh. I bet you. I could pick up pennies from the floor faster than most of you could. If penny picking becomes a national mainstream sport, you are looking at the Michael Jordan of that sport. <laughs> Michael Jordan flew in air, slammed on the hoops. I would swarm the floor. <laughs> Perhaps, like National Football League, NHL, that will be NPL, <coughs> National Penny Picking League. <laughs> For the first time ever in a national mainstream sport, naturally born shorties will have a compelling physical advantage in <laughs> Imagine that. Perhaps, maybe. Being big and tall is not so trendy. <laughs> Being short may be the new cool. <laughs> All right, and I'm dreaming back to reality. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, respected judges, and fellow contestants. Let me give you a short peek into my short <laughs> world. Let's, before I go too far out, let's define short. Of course, short is a relative thing. For Tom, the rest of the world is short. <laughs> For Anne, maybe a little short. For me, perhaps a five-year-old short. <laughs> well, I have researched enough to conclude that a male adult under five foot six inches 
should be considered short. You may wonder, wait a minute, what about short females? Let me tell you something. There is no such thing. <laughs> you know why? I have two words. High heels. <laughs> Let me illustrate this. True story. Few weeks ago, I was in Wahir security line standing to clear security. Right behind, right before me, there is a tall, I would say, 6263 drop dead gorgeous lady, if I may say that. Her legs were right up to my chest. <laughs> <laughs> my line of sight, I leave it for your imagination. <laughs> right before we had to go to the security screen, this tall lady climbs down, or rather jumps off her shoes, shrinks to about five minutes. <laughs>
Mr. Dostmash. Nelson Collins, a date with a princess and a roach, a date with a princess and a roach, Miles and Collins.
bottle of liquor in your refrigerator. We got to talk about. I got to get on this date. I'm afraid. So we're, so we're sitting on the couch and we're thinking, you know, we have too many bottles of liquor. Everything is funny. <laughs> uh, Dave, there's roaches over there in the corner. And look, I didn't know roaches gang bang. They're beating up this party the other day. He gave his buddy the other day. So we're oh like, oh my God, how do I do it? Time passed. I said, you know what, Dave? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going on that date. I'm going to show some heart. I'm going to be a man about this situation. We get to the date. Fumble the child. We step inside the restaurant. So much grander. Chandeliers all nice. Mirrors line the wall. Chefs cooking for the guests right in front of them. I sit her down. I sit down right beside her. I take out my wallet. Put it on the table. We're sitting there. And we're ordering our food. I have to get in front of me. I'd like some water. What would you like, Shana? She said, Milson, I would like the sound mistake. My heart dropped. <laughs> As it dropped, I noticed antennas on my wallet. Keep, keep, keep looking. They have other stuff, Sean. Just keep looking. I thought like, I was trying to kill the world. Boom! Hey, honestly, why'd you hit that? No problem. Hey, boom, no problem. Uh, just keep looking. He said, Miles, I want the sound mistake. Is that a problem? Not at all. Hey, no problem. Boom! And then she said, Miles, I'll have the sound mistake. Not a problem. Wait, just get her the sound mistake. As she's putting it down the menu, she, she, she's so relaxed. And I'm like, where are you from? She said, I'm from Ohio. And she reached down to pick up a... Uh, the other menu for dessert, she noticed the roach. She screams, ah, ah, roach, roach. I jump up behind her, ah, roach, roach. Oh, where did that come from? Where, oh, I want to see a manager right now. I cannot believe this. I'm appalled. <laughs> I, I said, you know what, Sean? Excuse me for a second. I'm running to the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom, take off my shirt, start dusting it. Oh, a roach fell out. It fell out. It fell out. <laughs>
Joe Sesso, Crazy Uncle Nino. Crazy Uncle Nino, Joe Sesso. For some people, dating can be really tough. Before I was married long ago, I had the hardest time dating. Now this was before the days of the eHarmonies and the Match.coms, the days where you actually had to go up to people and talk to them, you know, in person, right, face to face. I mean, the good old days, right? I mean, I had such a hard time meeting women, it was unbelievable. And when I saw a pretty girl, I'd get your, your typical deer in the lights look. <laughs> <laughs> and when I had a chance to talk to her, and I had to answer a question, something like, what's your name? I'd say, uh, humana, humana, humana. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been the fourth stooge. <laughs> My mom would always say to me, Joe, love isn't blind, Joe. Love isn't blind. Love will find you someday. I said, Mom, love might not be blind. But I think it took a wrong turn somewhere. Okay. It's not finding me, but I think it needs a GPS you know, right now. So finally, I turned to the person who I thought could help me the most, my crazy Uncle Nino. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, my family's from Italy. I'm Italian, and my crazy Uncle Nino came over from Italy a long time ago. But to this day, he has failed to grasp the English language. I mean, it's kind of funny, but when he sits down, I wish somebody would strap a teleprompter to his chest that can transcribe the words he's trying to say so we can actually understand them. I mean, it's that bad. But despite Nino's trouble with the English language, he's actually done quite well, both in business and with the ladies. So when I turned 21, I thought, what better person to ask for female advice than my crazy Uncle Nino? And Uncle Nino, in his thick Italian accent, was more than happy to help. Joey, of course I help you. I'm going to take you out, and, and I'm going to show you how to meet the woman. <laughs> Great. So I went over to Nino's house, and Nino explained to me that the key to meeting women wasn't so much the spoken word, but it was actually the body language that mattered. And you know what? I believed him. Because I thought, how could any woman understand what this man is trying to talk to her. <laughs> and he said to me, Joe, there are four things that are going to make your life so much easier. Four, pe four body language movements. He said, first of all, when you walk into a place, could be a club, a bar, whatever it might be, you're going to see a, a woman, and you're going to have to go up to her and talk. You have to pick out a girl and walk up to her. But you just don't walk anyway. You have to walk Uncle Nino's way. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Nino walks like this. Calm, cool, collected. Like he didn't care, but he wanted everybody to notice him. And then he can get into the conversation. Now he said, now Joe, another problem that people have is they get nervous, they ramble on and on, and they talk about stupid things, the girls become bored, and they leave. He said, if you find yourself doing this, excuse yourself from the conversation, turn around and do one of these. It'll snap you right back into the conversation. <laughs> Remember, his name was Crazy Uncle Nino. I said, okay, I guess that'll work. He said, but be careful. If she sees you slap yourself in public, she'll think you're crazy and she'll leave you anyway. Fair enough. Then he said, if she asks you a question you don't want to answer, you can sidestep any question simply by doing one thing. Eh, that's it. It means you don't know. It means you don't care. As Uncle Nino would say, you don't lose. Uh, you move on to the next question. All right, we'll see if that works. And finally, he said to me, and most importantly, that we might be having the best time being this girl. We might be laughing and talking and dancing. But she left out one minor detail. That she came to the club with her boyfriend. And he's watching us laughing and talking and dancing. And in fact, he wants to kick my butt. I said, oh, Nino, I'm not a fighter. Maybe we should stop right now. I don't want to do this. He said to me, Joey, I'm a not a fighter either. Look at my face, how pretty it is. <laughs> I said, okay, Nino, then what do you do in this situation? He said, you have to act crazy, because nobody wants to fight a crazy man. <laughs> you do the crazy man dance. <laughs> and then he leaves. I said, well, what about the girl? Well, she leave it too, because she think you're crazy. <laughs> Fair enough. So we went out. And Uncle 
Nino took me out and he said, let me show you in person first how, how it works. So he picked out his girl, he did his little walk, <laughs> and he began his conversation. Oh baby, your hair is beautiful, golden brown, like a autumn leaves. <laughs> what kind of pet do you have? And she said, well I have a kitty cat. Oh baby, I want you to be my kitty cat on the dance floor. Just like that, they were off dancing. I said, wow, this is easy. It's my turn now. <laughs> so I pick out my girl, I start my walk, my drink in hand, and I concentrate like never before, focused. But maybe I focus a little too much, because I fail to see the cocktail waitress with the tray of drinks. <laughs> and before you know it, boom! Drinks are all over the place, they're all over me, they're all over her, all over the floor. The music stops and everybody's looking at me. She's on the floor, she looks up and says to me, didn't you see me walking with that giant tray of drinks? I froze, I didn't know what to do. I thought to myself, what would Uncle Nino do? I looked at her and said, eh. <laughs> now keep in mind, she's a little frazzled. I was nervous, I said to her, Oh, baby, your hair is beautiful. It looks like, uh, like dead leaves. <laughs> he said, what? I said, oh, that's not good. I turned around. I did one of these. When she saw me do it, she said, excuse me, why did you just slap yourself in the face? I looked at her and said, eh. <laughs> Next question. What kind of pet do you have? She said, well, I have a pot belly pig. I said, oh, baby, I want you to be my pot belly pig. <laughs> Right then I realized that didn't come out too well. I went to sign myself again, and before I could do that, she said, uh-uh, I'll do you one better. And she threw a drink at me. I said, okay, I probably deserved it. But before I could move on to the next girl, I got a tap on my shoulder. I turned around. It was her big, burly boyfriend. He said to me, you call my girlfriend a pig? I said, well, that's not really what you think. I mean, I look back out of the corner of my eye. Uncle Nino's over here doing the crazy signal. <laughs> so I do the crazy man dance. <laughs> and it worked. He left. And then she left. And then we had to leave because the bar threw us out because they thought I was crazy. <laughs> in the parking lot, Uncle Nino said to me, Joey, what happened in there? I teach you everything. You screw it all up. I looked at him and just said, <laughs> we now have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. <clears throat> Joan Walton, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Joan <coughs> Gifting. 
Giving and receiving. Personally, I think we've gotten a little bit off track. For instance, what's this obsession we have with gift receipts? We, you and I, spend from Halloween until 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve choosing the perfect gifts. <laughs> and then, the day after Christmas, it all goes back! <laughs> This afternoon, I'd like to spend some time sharing some ideas on gifting and some of my own gifting experiences. Gifting can make relationships, but it can also test them. <laughs> Ladies, it's easier for us than it is for the guys. It's the whole guys, girls are from Venus, guys are from Mars thing. We can drop little <coughs> reminders. We can circle our favorite things in the catalog. But when it gets down to it, it's not in the guy's DNA to be interested in such things. <laughs> Do you want to know how you can get your guy's attention? Tell him you need tires for the car. <laughs> now there's something a guy can shop for. Let me ask you something. Would you rather be the gift door or the gifty? Ooh, the one that gets the presents, of course. Not so fast. The role of the gifty comes with tremendous pressure. Just think. I want to spend a lot of time and a lot of money choosing a gift just for you. The pressure is enough. So let me give you a couple of suggestions. First of all, when you're opening a gift, never, ever, ever say anything. No speculation. I had a friend that opened a box, opened her gift to see a Louis Vuitton box. Ooh, a Louis Vuitton purse, she exclaimed. <laughs> only to open the box and see Aunt Gertrude's sugar cookies. <laughs> they say it's more blessed to give than receive. Personally, I think most of us are better at giving than we are at receiving. The best gift I ever gave was a Father's Day gift for my husband. My husband loved baseball, and he loved the Philadelphia Phillies. There were days when he loved the Phillies better than he loved me. <laughs> when I saw the Phillies were playing the Cubs at Wrigley on his birthday, I had to get those tickets. The night before Father's Day, I wanted to wrap the gift. So I took those tickets in a little ticket envelope. They were a little bit bent. What do you do with bent tickets? Iron them, of course. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> In closing, 
let me leave you with five tips that hopefully will bring you gift-giving serenity. <laughs> Tip number one. Do not iron the tickets. <laughs> that is okay. Tip number two. It is perfectly okay to lie when you're opening a gift. <laughs> Tip number three. Husbands, are you listening? Useful, practical, functional, not in your vocabulary when you are choosing a gift for your wife. <laughs> Tip number four. Wrapping is optional. There is no biblical basis for it. <laughs> and tip number five, the last thing I have to leave you with is never, ever, ever believe a loved one when they say, I don't want anything. <laughs> Master, we have all the ballots. Excellent. Well, let's take advantage of this time while the ballots for the humorous speech contest are being tallied up, and let's let's get to know our speech contest contestants. If the contestants from the evaluation contest would first come up, please.
I'd like to begin with Joe, if you, if you would, please. Joe, if you would let all of us know how long you've been in Toastmasters, what club you are representing this afternoon. I'm with Toastmasters Plus, originally in Schaumburg, but now at Harper College, and now for six years. Very good. And your Toastmasters education level? CC with ACB. Okay. And C, I'll have? Soon. Soon? Very I think, soon. I think I've done everything, but there's a book you have to get signed. I'm the area governor who will be very interested in seeing that you complete that. <laughs> Joe, according to uh, the information that you left with us, you have three areas of interest. Golf, tennis, and chess. What do these three have in common? They're not more than ten letters. <laughs> we have varying degrees of difficulty. All of the levels of difficulty give me something to aspire to. All right, thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to give you this certificate of participation. Some sort of 
vague interest in Star Wars? <laughs> just that. Just that. Star Wars changed my life. I don't know what it did for you guys, but for me, when I saw that movie, I said, that's it. And my call sign, I used to fly in the Marine Corps, my call sign was Vader. I did a lot of things, and I had the privilege of doing Return of the Jedi at the April 25th, 2009, district level international speech contest. Can you do the breathing? Of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the characters. It's kind of like I just hear two pieces of music and I know exactly where the characters were. Back it's on. pretty sad. But... <laughs> <laughs> Barry, thanks so much. <laughs>
to 48 inches of time available. Uh, 48. Uh, oh, musky is the is the world's largest freshwater fish. It can get up to 65, 67, even 70 inches long. You catch a world's record musky, instant millionaire. And the biggest one I've caught was 48 inches, 27 and a half pounds. My brother, two years ago, caught one that was 38 pounds, 50 inches. Um, my whole family is involved with the musky fishing, so. So, so is it safe to say that the rest of your family is better fishing than your wife? <laughs> <laughs>
been in Toastmaster two years now. Uh, I represent the Palatine Toastmaster. <laughs> CC. All right. Soon to be a CL. Soon to be CL. Very good. Congratulations. You enjoy golf. Tell us about your golf game. <laughs> well, I had to brag this. I had a hole in one last week, a week before. <laughs> yep. How, long, how long was the hole? <laughs> What club did you play? Uh, six. six iron. Six iron. iron. And, and where was this? Uh, in Buffalo Grove. At Buffalo Grove? Yeah. So it worked out great. And ever since, I lost six balls in the golf course. <laughs> 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 Maria, thanks so much for your participation.
And I still do a little bit, I do some substitute teaching, so I'm, I'm still involved in that. Sixth and seventh grade, that's a lot of energy. It is. Yes. But I loved it. We are grateful for your service. <laughs>
Does anyone, can anyone tell me about some of the marketing educational programs? Shout out. What have we got going on? High five. High five. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thank you, Jerry. CC champion. CC champion. Club ambassador. Club ambassador. And what is this number? One, two, three, four, five, six. Super Seven. I'm not going to take the time to explain all these programs. They're all very exciting. There are flyers in back. If we run out, we'll make sure you get them. They're on the District 30 website. How many have been to the District 30 website recently? They're doing a great job maintaining it. Michelle's up there going, yeah, oh, yay me. She's doing a great job working on that website. So is our district hero who's not here. Please go to the website. Look at the flyers, look at the neat things we got going on. Please get involved so that we can continue to have great events like this. Do we have the envelope? We do. We do have the envelope. I'd like to ask our current trio members to please come down and join me for the awards. That means you, Michelle. <laughs> come on back. <laughs> Mr. Sreenivas. These are right in back. I, I need to Can you use five minutes? Oh, Time's up. Let's talk about the fall conference. How many of you are planning to go to the fall conference or even know what I'm talking about? Wow, well, pretty good. But those hands that are not up, you are missing out on a great opportunity. While the streets are coming down in a very distracting manner, <laughs> Fall Conference, November 12th, one day only, action packs, 7 o'clock in the morning with breakfast, all the way till 10 at night, which I guess I think they're doing line dancing or something scary, with the guy on the treaty looking for dates. <laughs>
and it's your chance to hear Johnny the Transition Man and all of the Advanced Club folks talk about evaluation and speaking tips and tricks about how to find your why in Toastmasters. And feel free to come out on Tuesday night at the Goatee, and Jane will be hosting that with the North Division. It's going to be very exciting. Jane, can never say your last name, so I'm going with Jane. <laughs> <laughs> then, on Saturday the 29th at the Willowbrook Hotel in Hinsdale, we're hosting essentially an all-day event, educational event, the same event, except for those of you who cannot wait to finish your CC and earn a CC champion pin. It's pretty cool. You're going to want one. You can get your CC by going and taking extra classes, meaning speakathons, completing another manual speech, and getting evaluated by our top-notch advanced club evaluators. I hope you will join us at one of these events. I won't continue on to the TLI because I'm sure that that exciting announcement will come at the division and district contest later. And I want to thank you for coming out today. It was a great contest. Awesome.
space. Mark